Hi guys, welcome to Piece of Code and welcome to this video. In this particular video, we are going to see about auto scaling groups, which is a very good feature and very important feature of AWS. Um, and it helps you to achieve that particular high availability and scalability architecture that you know basically a lot of organizations prefer, right? So before uh, getting deep into this particular uh, you know topic, let us see an example, right? Um, so the example goes like this, you created an application for a particular organization, right? And uh, initially the application was small, the number of users were small. So you basically deployed that application in a single EC2 instance. So users were there, they were requesting to your EC2 instance, which is your web server, right? They were sending the request using the fixed DNS point or public IP of your EC2 instance. This was the initial architecture. So this initial architecture was working fine, right? and uh, it was working fine and everything was good but the thing is uh, the user starts started to increase more users more users now what you did you added another ec2 instance okay and then more users increased you added another ec2 instance now what happened is that now the management became a little bit hectic because see each of these EC2 instances have their own DNS or public IP and basically if you are going to keep that architecture, you have to manage all the DNS and public IP, whatever you are using for each EC2 instance, right? And it is a very hectic job, right? And it is also very hectic to manage the traffic between these three EC2 instances, right? How will you know which particular request goes into which EC2 instance? So to, you know, to, you know, to get rid of that, right, you use something known as an ALB, which is an application load balancer. So you said, okay, I'm going to use a load balancer to uniformly distribute the traffic between my EC2 instances. This is how it went. Now the user, instead of directly requesting to your EC2 instance, the user will request, uh, you know, send his request to the ALB, which has a fixed DNS. So this DNS problem is solved and also, uh, you know, uniformly distributing the traffic across your EC2 instance also solved. So this, this is one of the problems and it got solved. But the thing is now as you know, you kept your application running and running more users. So the users in, you know, increased exponentially. More and more users joined. So basically, as more users joined, you need more instances, right? You more instances, you need more EC2 instances. Now adding those EC2 instances manually is a very hectic job. Right, because you don't know whenever your users spike and you don't know whenever your users go down, right? And basically you are manually terminating and adding instances, which is a very hectic job and it requires a lot of manpower. So what you do? The solution is to just create an ASG, which is which stands for auto scaling groups. What you do is basically behind this load balancer, instead of creating each single EC2 instance, you create an auto scaling group, right? So as it's a group, I'm just drawing a very badly shaped rectangle. Pardon my drawing. Okay. So what you do, you create, uh, you know, you, you, you have a, uh, you created an ASG, which is a auto scaling group. And basically you instruct that auto scaling group. We are going to see how you're going to instruct the auto scaling group to scale in and scale out whenever necessary. And what is that necessary point? So basically the auto scaling group will create more and more instances when there is a spike in traffic or the load increases, right? And what are the factors which increases the load? Basically number of requests increases or the CPU load on your particular web server increase. So if that particular thing happens, then basically your ASG, which is your auto scaling group scales out. It means it adds more in instances. What is scaling in? Basically, whenever the load is less, I'm, I'm saying this in layman's terms so you understand how the auto scaling group works first. So basically scaling in means that removing instances whenever basically there is no traffic or very less traffic. For example, in a specific day, you notice that okay, at 10 a.m. The, the load is very less. So you have instructed the ASG to actually terminate instances during that period. So at 10 a.m. there will be only two instances serving your requests but at 2 p.m that was 10 a.m right i said i said 10 a.m okay so at 2 p.m your the spike increases you know there is a lot of heavy traffic so at 2 p.m it will scale out and your asg will increase the number of instances and how it will do we are going to see that 
So this is how an ASG works. So it actually uh, automates that scaling out and scaling in adding and removing your resources. Uh, and it also reduces a lot of manpower and basically you don't have to manage anything. Once you configure it, it just works on its own, right? So this is the gist of the particular architecture that we are going to do and we are also going to do a demo on this particular architecture. So don't worry about that. Okay, so I hope this uh, example is clear as a mirror. I don't know if that if I said it correctly, but whatever. So let us talk about this auto scaling group, right? So let us talk about this auto scaling group. Now we, we understood what auto scaling group is, right? So let us see an example or a diagram. So this is how, uh, how auto scaling group looks like in a diagram. So here there are certain components over here. One is the minimum capacity, one is the desired capacity and one is the maximum capacity. What does these three things mean? So the minimum capacity basically says that, okay, the minimum number of instances, minimum number of instances in my ASG and it is given by the minimum capacity. Okay, so I want two number of instances, minimum the number of instances that should be inside my auto scaling group should be two. So that is our minimum capacity. Let us talk about the maximum capacity. It is basically the opposite of minimum capacity. So the maximum number of instances that I can have in my particular auto scaling group is basically, for example, seven instances. Now, what is this particular desired capacity? And it is a little bit tricky to understand. What is this desired capacity? If I have a minimum capacity, if I have a maximum capacity, why do I have to deal with the desired capacity? It makes no sense. So desired capacity is basically how many instances do you need to start with? So when you create an auto scaling group, you say that, okay, uh, after creating my auto scaling group, I want to start with four instances and I can go as far as seven instances in my group, which is basically the max capacity and I can scale into two instances which is my minimum capacity. So the desired particular capacity is the number of instances that you want to run at that particular moment. So you can say that the present moment describes the desired capacity. How many instances do you need at this particular moment? That is known as the desired capacity. I hope I made this concept clear about minimum capacity, desired capacity and maximum capacity. Make sense? So scale out means adding more instances and scaling in means that removing instances. That should be a piece of cake. Okay, let's move forward. ASG with load balancer, we have already seen them in the particular diagram. So basically we have users and we have an ELB or an ELB, whatever you want to use. And then we have uh, instances in our auto scaling group, right? And basically the ELB will distribute the traffic between our instances. Fine as that. Very, very simple thing. Okay, move forward. Auto scaling group attributes. Now, so let us see how can we create an auto scaling group and what are the attributes necessary for an auto scaling group. Um, a launch template. What is this template, right? So basically a launch template, it says like, what is the configuration of your instances, you can just say? right because ec2 instances will be there in your auto scaling group so what are the configurations that you want for all your ec2 instances right basically i want t2 micro ec2 instances for my asg so basically the asg will add and remove t2 micro instances so that t2 micro uh, instance that you want that configuration you need to give it in the launch template and using that launch template you actually create your auto scaling group simple as that so what does a particular launch template contain it contain your AMI data, right? Your machine image, Amazon machine image and your instance type, like I said, T2 micro, for example, then EC2 user data. For example, you want some user data to create an HTTP server, right? So you just paste that user data. What are the volumes like the storage security groups, obviously, then SSH key pair. IAM roles for your EC2 instance, if you if your EC2 instance needs to communicate with, for example, another service or another account or something like that, you have to give the role, right, for that. 
networks plus subnets information and uh, basically you should not give the network plus subnets information in the launch template uh, why you shouldn't give that i will explain it later but for now just remember that you should not give network plus subnet information in the launch template but you can give but don't give right that's an what you can say warning or something like that and a load balancer information you have to give all these things okay great then you need to give the minimum maximum and initial capacity which is the desired capacity that's why it's a tricky word to understand or you can just say initial capacity and then the scaling policies we are going to see scaling policies later on right so that's about it that's what you have in the launch template and previously it was known as launch configurations so whenever you see uh, launch con configurations in the exam don't think that it is a separate thing or something like that it is just a different name for launch template and it was used previously and it is deprecated okay now before going to this thing let us see the demo that i was talking about like this architecture that we saw right so basically you are going to create an alb we are going to create an auto scaling group and we are going to attach our alb to our auto scaling group and we are going to see some stuff like some cool stuff we are going to see all right let's go and start our demo okay guys so i am in my aws console and uh, let us start our demo right so the first things that i want is to create the load balancer and uh, attach the target group to it and then we are going to create our auto scaling group and then we are going to do a lot of stuff right so starting with the load balancer let us search for alb or application load balancer right so let's go to load balancers so it's a feature of ec2 you can either go to the ec2 console and go to load balancers over here or you can directly search for load balancers in the search bar you you can you can create it like that also right okay dekhte hain abhi kya kar sakte hain hum log so basically we have a application load balancer guys create a application load balancer without any issues mm. so let me give the application load balancer name so alb so let's say demo um, demo alb asg let us name it like that and let us make it internet facing ipv4 vpc is just leave it like that we are going to launch it in six different availability zones if you have watched my alb lecture then you would know all of this stuff these are all piece of cakes for you guys okay great now going here let's talk about this security group so there is a default so we have some security group let let us create a se separate security group for this particular alb right let us do that so it, it's going to create a separate security group listeners leave it to defaults um i think i have to create a target group now because obviously uh, the target of a particular load balancer should be inside the target group right so it should be instances right target group name uh, asg tg right so application sorry auto scaling group target groups right mm, everything else should be fine click on next so i don't have any instances as of now because i haven't created my uh, application you know sorry auto scaling group right if you had you know uh, other instances like ec2 instances you would have registered at targets over here but as we haven't created our uh, ec2 instances which will be our in our auto scaling group we are going to add this later okay so i'm just going to create the target group without any registered instances you can do that okay um so no uh, load balancer has been associated so let me go back to my load balancers and i think if i refresh it over here i will get that target group asg tg great now no no more things let us create the load balancer hmm? great let us create the load balancer now great so i have my load balancers and it will take some time to provision and we are not going to waste that time guys no time wasting okay so while it is provisioning and it is you know activating we are going to go to asgs i think it should be over here so auto scaling in the ec2 console only you will find everything related to ec2 yeah that makes sense so in the auto scaling section we are going to go to auto scaling groups over here and we are going to create our own auto scaling group right now and we are going to name this auto scaling group as demo asg create stuff now for that i always told you right always we require a launch template to launch an auto scaling group so we currently don't have a launch template so basically we are going to say create a launch template so if there is nothing we are going to create it i'm just going to say demo 
um, ASG template. It's it's good to follow one naming convention. I like that. I like a lot of stuff, but I like this stuff better. So yeah, um, here we are going to see some other stuff. Uh, so if you see this application AMI, so basically quick start. We are going to say quick start. I will select the Amazon Linux to AMI. Um, going to do that instance type. Let us go for T2 micro. And it says uh, don't include in. You can also select don't include in launch template because you can actually have a mix and match of different EC2 instance types in your auto scaling group, right? So if you don't specify it over here, then it also fine. But even if you have specified it over here, you can override it. Don't worry about it. We are going to see that later. Key pair. I should have a key pair. So let's select that. We don't need that key pair, but still let's select that. So network settings. Uh, basically, don't include in the launch template. Now, why? Because if you select whatever subnets and everything in this launch template, you will not be able to modify that in your auto scaling group because it will take all the configurations from your launch template. So, if you want to, for example, um, keep your EC2 instances or you know deploy your auto scaling groups in a different availability zone, you cannot do that because basically you have already given the subnet settings in your launch template so basically don't give your particular security settings like subnet info and everything in your particular launch template do that in your auto scaling group okay all right so let us see security groups uh, i'll select a security group uh, like launch wizard one which i already have so basically i'm going to select that security group or you can create a, a security group it's up to you uh, let us go to ebs volumes um you can create a volume, but it is still here a default volume, which is my boot volume. I'm going to leave it to defaults. So if I go down to my advanced settings, just scroll all the way down. Don't want to mess around with all these things. Uh, let's see how we can create a particular ASD in a simple manner. So in the user data section, I'm just going to paste this thing. Uh, basically, it's a user data script. And if you have followed my EC2 lecture, you will know that basically this creates a HTTP server and it creates a HTML page, simple HTML page, right? That's it. And basically, then we can create the launch template. Let me see if I can just modify any other thing. Hmm. Okay, so my launch template is fine. Let us create the launch template. So based on this launch template, you can create your auto scaling group. Basically, your auto scaling group will take all the configurations that you have mentioned in your launch template and it will launch the instances accordingly. Going to my auto scaling group. So I need to select a launch template. Let me refresh it over from here and let us select this demo ASG launch template. Um, next. So you can see here we can specify the network settings and you can specify in how many availability zones you can uh, actually launch this particular auto scaling group. For now, let us keep it in three availability zones. Okay, you can launch it up to in six availability zones, but let us launch this auto scaling group in three availability zones. Now you can see that how easily you can actually spread your auto scaling group across availability zones, right? Creating highly available and a very disaster reluctant architecture. So even if there is a disaster in a particular availability zones, other two availability zones will be there to take the requests, right? Great. So um, VPC and all these things are done. Uh, launch template is here. You can also override the launch template. Okay, let us click on next. So basically here you can give the load balancer information. I already have created a load balancer. So I'm just going to select and attach to existing lo load balancer or you can create a new load balancer. It will directly create a load balancer by taking all these particular settings. But I already have a load balancer. And basically, if I select this, so I have this ASG TG and it is it is attached to this uh, demo ALB, which we just created, right? Now, basically what will happen, uh, I have attached, you know, uh, basically given that target group name over here, which is attached to my load balancer. So basically whatever instances will be created, it will be registered as targets in my target group. It's as simple as that, because if you remember, in my target group while I was creating it, I didn't register any target there because I wanted my auto scaling group to be the target. So now whatever instances will be created in this auto scaling group will be registered as target there. Health checks. Let us create the ELB health check. That is fine. Click on next. 
so here we have to give the desired capacity minimum capacity and maximum capacity for now let us keep the desired as one it means that i want to start with one instance and presently i need only one instance maximum minimum capacity is one and maximum capacity is one so let us keep it that so basically our auto scaling group will be consisting of only one ec2 instance it's pretty boring but it's fine for now let's keep it at that way you're going to see we're going to tweak around this thing later on you can edit it later on no issues in that scaling policies let us leave it as of now we are going to discuss about scaling policies later on now let us click on next and let us click on next let us click on next so this is the review section create the auto scaling group okay so our auto scaling group is actually creating is being created and uh, if you just see over here if i just click on this auto scaling group there are some interesting things over here let us see that let us go to the to this activity tab and here where all the interesting stuff happens whatever instances will be added or removed from your auto scaling group will be shown over here and it will be shown as an activity so here you can see launching a new ec2 instance uh, because basically our desired capacity is one and our maximum capacity is one so we can launch one ec2 instance so it says here user requested creating an auto scaling group changing the desired capacity from zero to one right we have said that okay our desired capacity is one so it will create a new ec2 instance to match that desired capacity right that's what it is happening so if you see if you just refresh it you will see some interesting stuff uh, happening in this particular section but it takes some time to reflect so till then because you know the your ec2 instance is created in the background right and stuff happens so let me go to the ec2 console and let me go to this uh, instances if you see one instance has been created because in our auto scaling group i we specified that one desired instance should be there right and it is in running state right now let us go over here let us go to target groups if i go to this asdtg you see there is one registered target and it automatically got registered why because i had specified this target group while i was creating my auto scaling group so whatever instances will be created will be registered as target over here cool stuff and it is in healthy state so my instance has been created and it is ready to act as a web server so if we, if there are some unhealthy instances you can see it in your target group over here great so let me go to load balancers and uh, i have this in dns name ready i'm just going to copy this dns name and i'm just going to say http colon double slash and paste the dns name over there and just hit enter so see now you can see that this is the private ip address of our ec2 instance and we have already seen that yes basically uh, our uh, uh, you know this particular html uh, code is basically just returning a hello world from ip this one so this is the private ip address of your ec2 instance double check just go back to ec2 instances ec2 dashboard ec2 instances select that ec2 instance and see the private ip before address 172.31.82.181 that is the thing over here so our traffic is going through our uh, particular uh, load balancer and our load balancer is actually sending the traffic to our ec2 instance using connection termination and we have discussed connection termination in details in our elb lecture please watch the elb lecture great now this is how auto scaling group works but till now we haven't seen any power of auto scaling groups right we haven't seen any scaling out of scaling in activities so let us see that we have to do some fun stuff otherwise it just becomes boring and you guys will get bored from this lecture okay so let us go to our auto scaling groups over here mm, this is our auto scaling group let me go to our auto scaling group let me go to uh, details and this is the de desired minimum and maximum capacity let us edit that feature right now let me go and um, change my desired capacity to 2 now try to figure out will this particular configuration increase my ec2 instance by 1 because i have increased my desired capacity by 2 the answer is no why because i have specified the maximum capacity as 1 so your desired capacity cannot be more than your maximum capacity it can be greater sorry smaller than or equal to your maximum capacity makes sense right so i'm just going to say okay my maximum capacity is 2 and the minimum capacity is 1 fine and currently at this present moment i need two ec2 instances as my desired capacity now you can understand the difference between desired capacity minimum capacity and maximum capacity that's why i'm doing this stuff so let us update our particular ASG and if I go to this activity tab there will be some stuff happening and it will take some time to happen I think 
So I'm just going to pause the video as of now. When something happens in this activity history, I'm going to resume the video from that point. Don't want to waste your time, okay? Okay, welcome back. And you can see in this activity history, here there is some activity happened and it says launching a new EC2 instance. And at this particular time, a user requested update of auto scaling group constraints minimum one, maximum two and desired two. So changing the desired capacity from one to two. So basically it added one instance to match that desired capacity in simple words. So if you go to this particular instances over here, so see there are two instances running over here and basically we have two instances and this was newly created. If I just select that, it will have a private IPv4 address. So just check this private IPv4 address because we are going to see the result over here. Okay. So two EC2 instances mm, seems fine, seems good. Let us go to our this particular DNS endpoint of our load balancer and let us try to refresh this page refresh so see now the ip address change so now the particular um you know this particular traffic went to another ec2 instance right reload this instance reload that instance reload this instance now reload that instance now i have also talked about sticky sessions in our elb lecture so in using sticky sessions you can just redirect the traffic to only one ec2 instance and I've also talked about cookies. Please watch that lecture if you want to know in detail. But we are going to not that we are not going to cover that right now because I've already covered that. Uh, so you can see that our auto scaling group now increased an EC2 instance to match the desired capacity to two, and we are using our load balancer to load balancer traffic. Right now, let us see some uh, scale in actions. We saw a scale out action. Now let us see a scale in action it means that let us remove one EC2 instance from our auto scaling group and we can easily do that. Let's go to our auto scaling group and let us see what are the configurations we need to make. You can already guess this thing, right? We are going to reduce our desired capacity back to one, right? And you're going to remove, reduce the maximum capacity back to one or we can just keep it two if you want. Let's update that. And let us go to this activity section. Let us keep on refreshing. Okay, now it was so quick. Wow. So if you see over here, terminating an EC2 instance, because why? We have changed the desired capacity from 2 to 1. So basically, if you see what is the desired capacity now, you can understand what is the desired capacity now. What is the number of instances that you need at the current time? And the actually auto scaling groups scales out and scales in based on your desired capacity. The minimum and the maximum capacity actually acts like a, uh, you know, lower, you know, uh, you can just say a lower threshold and upper threshold, like the minimum capacity and the maximum capacity. But the desired capacity actually drives your auto scaling group to scale out or scale in. Now it should be clear as, I don't know, water. Is it sparkling water, which is the most clear water? I don't know. Should be anything else. If I go to instances now. Now, it, this particular instance will get terminated if you just wait for a while because this activity section, if because we saw in this particular activity section that the EC2 instance will be terminated, right? So here something known as connection draining, we already know what this is the reason of connection draining. So basically whenever an EC2 instance is disconnected from your particular, uh, you know, auto scaling group or removed is, is getting removed from your auto scaling group or it is being deemed unhealthy by your particular load balancer, it gives certain time so that the in-flight requests which are already made through that instance are complete. So that is why it is waiting for that connection draining period to complete. After that, those EC2 instances will get terminated, right? So we can just, do, we don't have to worry about that because we already saw the scale out. So obviously after the connection draining period, it will scale in and it will remove that EC2 instance. So we don't have to worry about that. So this is how you create an auto scaling group and you attach it to a load balancer. And basically we were able to successfully create this particular architecture. But now the other thing, the other question happens, the scaling out and scaling in were done manually by me, right? Because I changed the number of desired uh, EC2 instances from one to two and back to two to one. And that particular auto scaling happened manually, but you don't want to do it manually even. You want it to be, uh, you know, based on the load or you want to be it automatic, right? So to do that, we need something known as scaling policies and basically auto scaling policies. We, we say it as auto scaling policies and let us see what are auto scaling policies. 
Okay, guys. So back in our slides, and before going to uh, dynamic scaling policies, let's see this thing: CloudWatch alarms and scaling, right? So basically, uh, it is possible to scale uh, auto scaling group, which is an ASG based on CloudWatch alarms. An alarm monitors a metric such as an average CPU or a custom metric. Uh, metrics such as average CPU are computed for the overall ASG instances, and based on the alarm, you can scale out. You can create scale out policies, which mean you can create policies for. increasing the number of instances or you can create scale in policies decreasing the number of instances or terminating the instances so basically uh, a cloud watch alarm that you see over here uh, over here will be monitoring your auto scaling group it will be monitoring a metric the metric can be as we saw average cpu for example if the average cpu of your auto scaling group exceeds a particular limit like 50% then you have a scale out policy which says okay add instances in our auto scaling group and based on that particular scaling metric it will be new instances will be added to your auto scaling group so basically whenever your particular average cpu of your instances goes beyond 50% this particular cloud watch alarm will be triggered and based on an alarm a scaling policy or a scale out policy will get activated or triggered and based on that policy the instances will be added or removed from your auto scaling group that's what cloud watch alarms and scaling means now let's see about auto scaling groups and this basically dynamic scaling policies so if you see in dynamic scaling policy we have three types target tracking uh, target tracking scaling simple or step scaling and scheduled actions let's talk about target tracking scaling and it is the most simple and easy to set up okay example i want the average asg cpu to stay around at 40% so you are just saying okay uh, all of my instances whatever desired number of instances i have in my auto scaling group i want those to be at 40% average cpu if it exceeds 40% then you can increase the number of instances so you can keep that kind of a scaling policy so this is known as target tracking policy so you have a target and you are tracking that particular target simple or step scaling step means what based on a step you are doing something right so basically a uh, trigger a cloud watch alarm when cpu goes beyond 70% so a cloud watch alarm for a scale out policy will be triggered if your cpu goes beyond 70% right so whenever my cpu goes beyond 70% then add two units of ec2 instances or add four units of ec2 instances that is one policy and another step policy is that when the cloud watch alarm is triggered for example whenever the cpu goes below 30% then remove one instance so for one step you are doing one action and for another step you are doing another action that is why it is a simpler step scaling third type of scaling scheduled actions this is a peculiar type of scaling and it can be a little bit of tough to understand at first basically what it says is that based on some usage patterns which you already know you will automatically trigger a scaling policy you can automatically trigger a scale out or scale in policy for example anticipate a scaling based on known usage patterns you know that to increase the minimum capacity to 10 at 5 pm on friday so you know that the maximum uh, number of uh, you know requests that you get is most at 5 pm on friday so basically you increase the minimum capacity and your desired capacity so that you can be able to tolerate that increase in requests right that is what a scheduled action means Let's talk about predictive scaling or predictive scaling policy. This is a machine learning based scaling uh, scaling policy. So basically, it will analyze the historical load. What was the load load, for example, for past fourteen days? It will analyze that, and it will generate a forecast like what will be the load for the next fourteen days. I am giving an example. So based on that forecast, the scheduling actions will take place. Either it will scale out or scale in based on that particular forecast. Okay. now let us see some good metrics to scale on what are the metrics based on which we will scale on because we already saw that the alarm will get triggered based on a metric right what are the metrics that is better you know which which is good one is cpu utilization in the target tracking policy we saw that basically based on a particular cpu utilization for example 40% cpu utilization of all your instances you are actually scaling out and scaling in so cpu utilization is a very good thing right next is request count for target to make sure the number of requests per ec2 instance is stable you want to make sure okay each instance re receives a target value or a request count per target of 3 so each request each instance can only request you know get a request three requests per instance right simple as that average network in and out 
if your application is network bound you can also analyze your network traffic and you can see okay this much of uh, network um, in and out i need so based on that you can scale out or scale in or you can also create any custom metric in cloudwatch and if you are going to if i'm going to make a video on cloudwatch then we are going to cover this custom metrics also we're going to see how we can create custom metrics in cloudwatch okay now then uh, this scaling cooldowns uh, what what are scaling cooldowns so after a scaling activity happens you are in the cooldown period and this is different from the connection draining of auto scaling sorry of load balancers guys please keep that in mind so basically what this is related to auto scaling groups not load balancers don't get confused between uh, you know connection draining and scaling cooldowns okay because it is a bit difficult to understand after a scaling activity happens you are in the cooldown period which is default of 300 seconds during the cooldown period the asg will not launch or terminate additional instances okay basically why to do that mm, basically sometimes what will happen if you see this particular diagram scheduling action occurs and if the default cooldown is in effect it will ignore that action because sometimes what will happen is that you are terminating one instance right and if there is no cooldown effect then the particular asg will see uh, okay one instance got terminated and basically it, it will see that okay the desired capacity is not met right so it will add one instance so this will become a loop addition and removing will become a loop because there is no cooldown period so as one instance is removed the desired capacity is not met so it will add one instance then it will remove one instance so that because a scheduling action happens you are removing an instance right so you remove an instance then it will be added back because basically you have to match the desired capacity right so this cycle will happen so what will happen this cooldown period will be uh, terminating that so basically the cooldown period will help to uh, uh, you know deal with this particular situation so if the cooldown is in effect then please ignore that action if the cooldown is not in effect please launch or terminate an instance that is how the cooldown period is um you know used and it is a very good feature of auto scaling groups okay so we talked about dynamic scaling policies let us see dynamic scaling policies in action we are going to see a demo uh, we have already created an auto scaling group and a load balancer right we are just going to modify that and we are going to add a dynamic scaling policy right now okay guys so uh, let us see an a demo on uh, scaling policies dynamic scaling policies and scaling policies in auto scaling groups right so here i am in my auto scaling groups right now and uh, let me go to automatic scaling over here and here we have three options over here which is dynamic scaling predictive scaling and schedule actions let us see the schedule actions if i go to uh, create a schedule action you can create a schedule actions and you can just specify the desired minimum and maximum capacity you can just say okay i want it the recurrence to happen once or every 30 minutes or every week every day wherever you want time zone specific start time and end time because it's a schedule action so based on that start time and the recurrence action your schedule action will take place second is predictive scaling basically you can create a predictive scaling policy and uh, basically based on previous forecast it will do that scaling activity right it is very easy to do you can track a particular metric for example you want to uh, forecast based on the cpu utilization and uh, you can select that and basically it will work accordingly right then we have the dynamic scaling policy which we are interested in right now and this this is the only thing that we can i can show a demo, demo on right so let us create a dynamic scaling policy and inside the dynamic scaling policy if you see there are some options one is the target tracking policy one is the step scaling and another one is simple scaling so in step scaling uh, or simple scaling right uh, give the policy name create a cloudwatch alarm for a particular metric because on the on based on that particular metric you are going to uh, write your particular uh, simple scaling policy right but for now we don't know how to create the cloudwatch alarm because i haven't taught you about cloudwatch alarm so don't worry about that we are going to see that later on so what action you want to take add some instances for example add one unit of instance so basically one capacity unit of instance or remove a particular capacity of instance uh, based on the simple scaling policy or if you want to go for step scaling policy you can write steps over here so add instances add one instance of capacity unit right and basically based on a particular cloudwatch alarm or a metric you can do that and then you can add a step for removing instances so this is the step scaling policy but the easiest one is the track target tracking policy and we're going to see the target tracking policy as of now target tracking scaling 
okay so let us track the cpu utilization okay so let us see okay uh, if the average cpu utilization of all my instances goes beyond 50 percent or whatever percent you specify for example 40 or 50 percent then basically increase the number of instances okay so we want all our instances in our auto scaling group to be maintained at 40 percent cpu utilization okay so if it goes beyond that add instances if it goes below that just remove the instances something like that let us create this dynamic scaling policy and this dynamic scaling policy has been enabled right now but we have to do certain steps right if i go to details over here so i have the maximum capacity of two um let us edit this and let us keep the maximum capacity to three let us update it okay so desired capacity one maximum capacity one minimum capacity one and uh, 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 if I just go to the activities and uh, if I go to sorry the EC2 instances let me just do this thing so I have only one instance running right but the thing is it will only get uh, triggered like right? this particular auto uh, dynamic policy will get triggered only if the CPU utilization of my EC2 instances goes above 40 percent right that is the thing but if I go to monitoring over here, so in monitoring section, you can see uh, some monitoring metrics for your EC2 instances, right? And if I select this EC2 tab over here, if you see all this stuff, if you can see the CPU utilization is around zero, right? It is not even uh, a particular point, like it, it is not even 10%. So basically our uh, policy will not take effect. So somehow we need to increase our CPU utilization to 40%, greater than 40%. So uh, let me just SSH into my instance. Um, this is my running instance. So let me just SSH into my instance using instance connect. Let me connect to that instance. And we are going to use something known as stress. So using stress, you can uh, dispatch hogs on your particular Linux machine. And those hogs will basically, uh, you know, explode your machine, something like that. It will just burst your machine it will be a disaster basically what it will do is basically it will use all the cores of your cpu basically it will increase your cpu utilization right like bots so we're going to install stress into our machine so i'm just going to copy paste this command copy and paste install and then after installing we are just going to uh, install this particular sorry we first install EPL and then we are going to install stress okay paste install stress Okay, so stress has been installed. Let me just clear the screen and let us dispatch our hogs on our EC2 instance so that our CPU utilization increases beyond 40%. So the command to do that is stress hyphen C4. Sorry. Okay, now if you see it is dispatching hogs four CPUs and so basically uh, in some time, uh, my particular EC2 instances, uh, sorry, my EC2 instances CPU utilization will go beyond 40%. It will just go to 100%. It will just, just skyrocket to 100%, right? If that particular thing happens, then a dynamic policy will just, uh, you know, take place. And basically, uh, our EC2 instances should be increased from one to two to three, because currently we have only one instance, right? So our auto scaling groups should trigger more instances. So let us wait for these hogs to do their job, let them skyrocket the CPU utilization to 100% and let us see in the activity section if the auto scaling policy goes into effect. So I'm going to pause the video right now. Hi guys, welcome back. And basically I waited for like five minutes and now uh, if I see in my activity, uh, here some activity happened launching a new EC2 instance and here is the activity. So at this particular time a monitor alarm target tracking demo ASG alarm high it got triggered and it triggered the policy target tracking policy change the desired capacity from 1 to 2. So at some particular this particular time uh, basically at, uh, you know at alarm got triggered which basically triggered my target tracking policy which says if uh, the you know the CPU utilization goes beyond 40% then add instances right. 
so basically that's why it added the instances if i go back to monitoring and if i go to ec2 right now then if you see it over here the cpu utilization here if you see the cpu utilization over here it is 56 57 or something like that so basically it went beyond 40 percent right if i just maximize this thing then if you see this data points right so this data points uh, actually show you the particular cpu, CPU utilization percentage okay so if i go back to my instances over here you can see that one instance ha is, is is basically running so this was running beforehand and this instance was just created by my auto scaling group now you can see the power of auto scaling and your dynamic scaling policies right how actually they work and how easily easy it is to configure them and how you know trustworthy and handy they are in actually giving you a high availability and scaling architecture now if i go to cloudwatch right so this is a cloudwatch service basically this is a monitoring service and here the alarm was created automatically we don't know how to create the alarm i'm just going to show you some stuff which is very very cool uh, in this particular alarm so if i see um, see so this particular alarm is was created and basically uh, this target tracking alarm was created and if the CPU utilization goes, if this particular CPU utilization goes beyond 40% for three data points within three minutes, then please add instances. Now this says insufficient data, it means that basically this is not updated as of now, but as of per our activity over here, an instance has been created. So this particular CloudWatch uh, metric, you know, CloudWatch alarm will get activated after some time. And okay, it got activated just now and it is in alarm state. So basically this alarm got triggered because our CPU utilization went beyond 40%. That's what it says. So okay, so this works and we saw a target tracking policy over here. And basically if the you know CPU utilization goes below 40%, then it is pretty easy to guess that basically it will, it will terminate the instances. Okay, uh, basically it is as simple as that. Okay, so let me go back to this particular auto scaling groups and uh, let us see. Oh, if I go to this auto scaling group right now, if I go to activities, then another EC2 instance is being launched because obviously the CPU utilization stays at more than 40%, right? Because uh, my hogs are still in work. So I, I don't know if I can quit it. Okay, now, and I was able to quit it. So basically now I have quit my hogs. Basically now the CPU utilization will go down below 40 percent and then basically this alarm another alarm will get triggered which will be below 40 percent and basically my instances will get terminated that's very easy to guess so for now as the instances uh, you know the cpu utilization goes goes beyond 40 percent another instance was added increasing the desired capacity from two to three so if i go back to my ec2 instance right now ec2 instances i will be having three ec2 instances in some time okay but after some time as i just removed my hogs uh, the cpu utilization should go below 40 percent and all of my instances should get should get terminated and only one instance should be running which will be my desired instance right okay makes sense so that was all about guys auto scaling groups and dynamic scaling policies and everything related to that how i can attach it to a load balancer and everything and this is how you can work with it okay so before going, uh, you know, com completing this, uh, you know, lecture, uh, make sure you clean up everything because you don't want to pay for anything. You don't want to pay a dime. So you can just uh, select this auto scaling group and delete this auto scaling group. Just click on delete and just delete. Okay. So this auto scaling group will get deleted and along with it, all the instances will get terminated. So you don't have to worry about the instances at, at all. Go to load balancers. Okay. So this is an attached state. So basically you will go to actions and basically delete the load balancer and just say confirm delete the load balancer the load balancer will get deleted and then you can go to your target groups right your target groups so basically you can select your target group actions delete the target group yes delete the target group and it will get deleted so basically remove uh, always uh, remember after playing around with aws please clean up everything that you have done as per security groups i'm just going to keep the security groups no no issues in that there is none no other things that i need to care, take care of 
in the instances everything will get terminated as our auto scaling group gets deleted so yeah guys that was all about this lecture i hope you guys understood all about elb asg and how to create a highly scalable and what it is called available highly scalable and available architecture so i'm going to meet you in the next lecture till then have a nice day bye bye